Hello everyone, welcome back. Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. For those who are new, thanks for checking out my channel. I've been doing some bonus videos besides my usual Monday and Friday videos. And in today's video, I am going to start sharing the best books of 2020 according to genre, starting with the top six poetry collections I read in 2020. Just over a week ago, I shared my top 20 countdown of 2020, but you may have noticed that although there were several different genres, the list kind of leaned a little heavy towards fiction and historical fiction. The top 20 didn't really reflect the diverse books that I read last year. So I didn't have the opportunity to share some amazing books with all of you. But I really want to let you know about some of these incredible books. So I'm going to do a series of videos and go through 10 genres, giving you the top books of 2020 in that genre. At the end of the video, I will let you know about some of the other bonus videos that will be coming up very soon. The top six poetry collections of 2020 are, in no particular order, first is Dear Girl by Asia Mayrock. Dear Girl is a debut collection of poems that are important for everyone. The poems are so powerful. They punch you in the gut, make you feel vulnerable, and then make you feel invincible. If you get a chance to check out the audio version of this book, I would highly recommend it. The audio is Asia performing her poetry in spoken word, and she puts so much emotion into her words, it makes the experience even more intense. These poems are empowering to all women and to all who love them. Next up is another debut collection, it's The Circle Game by Margaret Atwood, which was originally published in 1964. The poems include themes of nature, photography, dystopia, play. There is some great imagery, clever lines and verses, and humor as well. If you are an Atwood fan, this is worth reading. Or if you've never read any poetry by Atwood, then this is a good place to start. The next poetry collection is a beautiful book, Live Oak with Moss by Walt Whitman. I love the texture of the cover. Um, it is raised and it has sprayed edges. And this includes 12 poems that Whitman wrote when he was turning 40. They were his first intense reflections on the love and attraction he felt for other men. And there is history in these poems because he attempted to define same-sex love decades before the word homosexual became a common word. He also dreams of a supportive, loving community, you know, like a hundred years before today's LGBTQ rights movement. The book also includes stunning illustrations by Brian Selznick. I'm just going to show you some of those. There's another one here. So it's just a gorgeous book and a little bit of history as well. The fourth poetry collection I want to share is Word Problems by Ian Williams. Word Problems has all of the things I appreciate in Ian Williams' writing. The structure of the book as a whole and the individual poems are just as important as the words and poems themselves. And I think that Williams makes very intentional and deliberate decisions on the structure of his writing. The poems themselves are clever. Um, many of them make you think. They have surprising or twisty endings. You think the poem is about one thing and then you realize that wasn't where it was going at all. Um, the message is usually much more profound. The poems also let William's humor shine uh, while still making an impact on important issues of our time. And I think that William's ingenious writing places him among Canada's most respected writers and poets. And I can't wait to see what is next from him. Next is Holy Wild by Gwen Benaway. And if the cover art by Quill Christie Peters doesn't get your attention, then the 24 poems in this collection will. Gwen Benaway is an Indigenous transgender woman who, through her poetry, challenges views about our bodies, our homeland and our communities. 
And these poems are powerful and have themes of abuse, violence, love, sex, and identity. Some of the prose are very dark and intimate, and others are so bright you are blinded by the honesty. Benoit has a real talent for writing emotion. I don't think I've ever had my heart ripped out uh, in this way while reading poetry before. I think she's a gifted writer with a strong voice to pay attention to. As some of you already know, I like to give new writers an opportunity, and that was the case with the last poetry collection I want to talk about. This time I was so glad I did. Open Heart Surgery by Johanna Leo. Um, Johanna is originally from Mexico and is now based in Hawaii. The line drawings on the cover, and they are throughout the collection, are by Michelle Gomez. And for a young writer, I was very impressed how seamlessly Johanna used nature in her poetry. She personifies nature so beautifully. Her descriptions are remarkable, and many times I would stop to read a line over again to savor it. Her arrangements of words in a verse or line was often astounding and charismatic. It's just a quick content warning. Um, there are some poems that deal with um, suicide, sexual assault, and eating disorders. If you are looking for a new poet to read, I see a lot of potential in Johanna Leo's writing. She's someone to pay attention to. So that's six poetry collections to check out if you haven't already. I will list them all below in the description box. Coming up, I will have videos on the top short stories, top classics, and top nonfiction of 2020. I will also do a couple of lockdown and literature um, as we are still making our way through this pandemic. Please let me know if you have read any of these poetry collections before. What are your favorite poetry collections or poets? What should I be putting on my list? Please share your thoughts. I look forward to chatting with you in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and don't forget to make every day an adventure.